Hello, my name is Dr. Tahisha Nicole Tolbert, and as part of the SEM lecture series, I will be discussing ultrasonography for the detection of small bowel obstruction. The objectives of this lecture are to discuss indications for SBO ultrasound, technique for obtaining SBO images, typical SBO findings, differentiate between SBO ileus and strangulated bowel, discuss the limitations of SBO ultrasound, and give an algorithm for incorporation of SBO ultrasound into your practice. The main indications for emergency bedside ultrasound looking for SBO include acute abdominal pain, peritonitis, abdominal distension or mass, and persistent nausea or vomiting. The goals of ultrasound for SBO are to evaluate for signs of mechanical bowel obstruction by looking for dilated loops of bowel, checking for peristalsis, and assessing for free fluid. Imaging plays a vital role in diagnosis of SBO. Plain radiography is typically the initial imaging modality used in the ED when SBO is suspected. However, the diagnostic accuracy varies between 50 to 80 percent. Now, a recent ED-based study by Jang et al. shows that ultrasound compares favorably to x-ray in the diagnosis of SBO. In this study, patients had an emergency physician performed ultrasound prior to x-ray or CT. The study found that dilated bowel on ultrasound had a sensitivity of 91 percent and specificity of 84 percent for SBO and decreased bowel peristalsis on ultrasound had a sensitivity of 27 percent and specificity of 98% for SBO. This data suggests that ultrasonography, rather than x-ray, should be considered as a first-line imaging modality when SBO is on the differential diagnosis. Generally, you are going to position the patient supine. However, semilateral, lateral, or semi-erect positioning may also be used to avoid interference from gas echoes. For your probe selection, you are going to use a 3.5 to 5 megahertz abdominal probe for the standard exam, traditionally with your indicator toward the patient's right. Next, you're going to image the abdomen in four windows, epigastric region as shown here, right and left pericolic gutters as illustrated here, and suprapubic region. If an SBO is not visualized, yet suspicion remains high, you should consider performing an ultrasound of the remaining abdomen looking for dilated loops of bowel. The findings typical of SBO are dilated bowel loops greater than 25 millimeters, increased intraluminal fluid appearing anechoic or containing small hyperechoic reflections, peristalsis, which is initially increased, and then decreased or absent later in the course of the SBO. The characteristic to and fro movement of intraluminal contents as they attempt to move past the obstruction. Keyboard sign of valvula conivance in the jejunum. The keyboard sign is when the valvula conivance, also known as plica circularis, become dilated in a fixed loop of bowel and they take on a keyboard-like appearance when scanned in the longitudinal orientation. You may also possibly see circumscribed free fluid between dilated bowel loops, typically forming a triangular shape. Um, this is also known as the tenga sign. This is a classic picture of SBO and ultrasound. You see distended loop of bowel measuring approximately 42 millimeters, and filled with liquid fecal material. It's important to note that the measurement should be taken at 90 degrees to the small bowel wall as you can get falsely dilated measurements if they're taken in an oblique fashion. In this image, there's a dilated loop of small bowel measuring 46 millimeters in diameter with a small amount of free fluid between the loops or tenga sign as indicated by the white arrow. This free fluid should raise concern for bowel strangulation. 
This image shows the dilated bow loops with a clear visualization of keyboard sign. This video clip is a classic view of SBO with dilated loops of bow and prominent valvula conovents. This video clip shows the classic to and fro movement within bow that is typical of SBO. This is another video clip showing the to and fro movement within the small bow. In late SBO, the bowel contents will become more hyperechoic within the dilated loops as demonstrated in this video clip. This is another image of late SBO with hyperechoic densities within dilated bowel. This loop measures approximately 40 millimeters. This is a video clip demonstrating the late SBO findings of hyperechoic densities within dilated loops of bowel. It is often difficult to distinguish between ileus and mechanical obstruction. However, if you have a patient that is recently post-op with hypoechoic or absent bowel sounds and the following findings on ultrasound, uh, dilated bowel, less than 25 millimeters, bowel filled with gas rather than fluid, both small and large bowel dilation, and lack of peristalsis. This may be more indicative of ileus rather than an SBO. According to a study by Ogata et al., abdominal ultrasound is also useful in evaluating for bowel strangulation. Ultrasound findings suggestive of strangulated bowel include dilated akinetic bowel loop, asymmetric bowel wall thickening greater than 3 millimeters, large amount of free fluid between the loops of bowel, and submucosal edema. These findings are going to warrant serial ultrasound exams to look for increasing free fluid or submucosal edema in addition to an emergent surgical consult. Differentiating between simple SBO versus strangulated SBO by ultrasound can be extremely challenging and time-consuming as well, so it may be beyond the scope of the emergency physician's practice. The limitations of ultrasonography for SBO are due to three factors, patient, operator, and equipment. It may be difficult to visualize intraperitoneal abnormalities in patients who are obese or have a large amount of bowel gas. And as with other ultrasound applications, the reliability of this test is operator and machine dependent. The algorithm for patients presenting with suspected SBO is as follows. You get a patient presenting with acute abdominal pain, peritonitis, abdominal distension or mass, and persistent nausea or vomiting, you're going to want to obtain a bedside ultrasound looking for SBO. If your ultrasound is consistent with SBO, you're going to want to get an emergent surgical consult and consider placing a nasogastric tube. If your ultrasound is equivocal, you're going to obtain an abdominal x-ray then if this test is also non-diagnostic, obtain a CT of the abdomen pelvis. We hope that this lecture provides insight into the emergent diagnosis of SBO and the utility of ultrasound in the SBO algorithm. References are listed here.